Less than 100 years ago, this land in West Africa was a rich forest. Tigers and elephants roamed free. Today, the big game is gone, and little stands in the way of the Sahara Desert sweeping south into northern Togo. These now arid grasslands are home to an exploding human population. Family compounds dot the fields and hillsides near the remote village of Ferende. The Kabye people grow millet and root crops. But the soil quality is marginal, and they are barely subsisting now. Growing numbers of people are stressing the carrying capacity of the environment, and severe problems are forecast in this coming decade. These children are fortunate because their village of Farenday is participating in an experiment to grow a new food. This project design won the prestigious 1987 European Award for Appropriate Environmental Technology, sponsored by the United Nations Environmental Program. The village is growing spirulina, a productivity breakthrough that yields more protein on less land and water than any other crop. It's an environmentally sound green food machine. This microscopic algae, the richest protein and vitamin food in the world, is harvested and dried as a nutritious food supplement. At Ferende's health clinic, undernourished children have first priority to take spirulina. One tablespoon a day brings remarkable recovery from malnutrition. Ripley and Denise Fox of France have pioneered the integrated village system over the past 10 years. Since 1984, they have worked with two local men, Masiki and Laurent, and the village committee. It's designed to be self-sufficient and income generating, and flexible enough to accommodate many cultural traditions. Using a biogas digester, wastes are safely transformed into fuel, compost, nutrients, and even food. Although many food crops are dependent on expensive chemical fertilizers that subsistence farmers cannot afford, this integrated system transforms waste into nutrients. The concept of waste recycling is not new. It is central to NASA's plan to grow algae in space stations for oxygen and food. In third world villages, human and animal wastes are major pollutants, transmitting disease and intestinal parasites. Family composting latrines help eliminate the source of parasites that consume up to 30% of the food eaten by people. Since the introduction of family latrines in Ferende, the people noticed even their chickens became healthier. Each Saturday, thousands of people come to Ferende's central market. Both women and men use the community latrines that are the first part of the integrated system. Laurent adds leaves from fast-growing lucana trees to the latrine waste for extra plant matter. Animal manure is useful too. All this flows into the biogas digester. Solar heat ferments and breaks it down into biogas, liquid, and solid portions. Biogas, composed of methane and carbon dioxide, is collected in the gas holder. Methane is piped to the health clinic for cooking and sterilizing instruments. Carbon dioxide, the main nutrient for spirulina, is added to the basin water. The liquid effluent can make a superior compost that can be sold to farmers to increase soil fertility. The water contains nitrogen and minerals for the spirulina. In the morning, Masiki and Laurent filter it through sand beds, filling the solar sterilizer. Inside these black pipes, the water will be sterilized at over 80 degrees centigrade for five hours. 93 degrees centigrade. That means it's nearly boiling water. That means if if there are any parasites left in the, coming from the sand filter, they're destroyed, passing through the sterilizer, and we're not going to contaminate the algae basin. The next morning, the cooled water is added to the basin. Solar panels charge truck batteries that turn the paddle wheels, promoting spirulina growth. Spirulina is grown on regular chemical nutrients in this 25 square meter basin. This tiny area can provide a tablespoon of spirulina for over 25 children every day of the year. When a paddle wheel motor stops, 
the growth rate slows down, so it's critical to repair it as soon as possible. Next to the largest basin is a fish pond, soon to be filled with water. The fish will feed on live spirulina and become another source of food and income. Spirulina is quality controlled in the health clinic laboratory. The culture grows year round here and can be harvested every day of the year for a continuous supply of food. Masiki and Laurent harvest the microscopic spirulina by pouring the pond water through a fine screen. It soon becomes a thick paste. Eventually we're going to have a pipe across here with several little dips so that you get an even flow through the whole screen of the cup. The paste is scooped off and loaded on a drying screen. This goes into a solar heated dryer. In several hours, wet spirulina dries into flakes. This is sold locally and distributed at the health clinic. The integrated system converts waste into biogas, compost, spirulina and fish. It helps restore the environment and creates economic opportunity for third world communities. The children call spirulina mixed in water their green medicine. Rose, the clinic nurse, tells the mothers about this new food. A spoonful a day with its 65% protein, concentrated beta carotene, B vitamins and iron will protect their children from blindness and anemia and strengthen their immune system. These mothers and children are among those who volunteered for a three-month clinical study to demonstrate the remarkable benefits of taking spirulina each day. First, a before photo is taken of each child. The clinic staff examines the children for malaria, diarrhea, and parasites. The child is weighed. Then Rose records body measurements on a health chart. Once a week, for three months, the child will be examined. The results of this clinical study will be reported to the United Nations and other international agencies to gain their support to build more integrated systems. Rose reviews the child's problems with the mother and prescribes a teaspoon of spirulina each day. She prepares enough for one week and the mother agrees to bring her child each week for a checkup. In the following weeks, each child will consume a tablespoon a day. This girl had a skin disease on her legs. A spirulina salve was applied. She was encouraged to drink spirulina every day to boost her immune system. At first, the unhealthy children who are brought to the clinic have a variety of reactions to this strange green medicine but they find spirulina has an acceptable taste. Soon they drink it easily every day and usually begin gaining weight in the first week. These are some of the fortunate mothers and children who have come from miles around to take advantage of the spirulina nutrition program. At the end of their visit in 1989, Ripley and Denise Fox were honored by the entire village. The people turned out to show their gratitude for building the integrated system and providing spirulina to their children. The integrated village system has been sponsored by churches, communities, corporations, and international agencies in Europe, America, and Japan. But above all, it is the enthusiasm the participation and the training of the village people that will ensure success. Growing spirulina can augment the food supply, not by clearing the disappearing rainforests, but by cultivating the expanding deserts. The integrated village system turns waste into resources, resources into food, and creates economic opportunity. It represents a new model we need 